Good evening, and we begin with an update on a fire under a ramp to one of Portland's most historic bridges and one that appears to be directly connected to the city's homeless crisis. Flames sparking, officials say, in an unassuming spot, people had dug out under the steel bridge in order to find shelter. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm David Molko. It was a dangerous operation for firefighters as they faced unknown hazards and at one point even had to use a sledgehammer to break through a wall. Tim Gordon joins us tonight at the west end of the Steel Bridge. Tim, 24 hours in, it sounds like that ramp is still closed. Yeah, David, it is certainly still closed. You know, first, as you said, hazards for firefighters and now potential hazards of that Everett Street on-ramp uh, being damaged, being looked at now by ODOT engineers before they'll decide if it's safe to reopen. So here's what first responders faced Wednesday afternoon, called out to the fire. Uh, through cinder block walls they had to break to get into where homeless campers were living. There they got the fire out and found one person inside seriously injured by smoke and fire. That person rushed to the hospital. Uh, firefighters had to do a lot of crawling around in there, making sure nobody else was inside where people had burrowed sleeping areas into the dirt under that ramp. Firefighters, in fact, had to be decontaminated afterwards because there was, quite frankly, a lot to wade through. There was quite a bit of uh, personal belongings, quite a bit of human waste, quite a bit of uh, improperly discarded needles that um, our crews were working in and around. Now, ODOT engineers are inspecting these steel I-beams that support the roadway, the ramp. They got an initial look early today, but they need more time to inspect everything fully and safely. And that may not be a possible, really, until a lot of debris is cleared out of there. As you saw, there is a lot of it. As we talk about safety for everyone, we certainly have got to think about the folks who were living under there in clearly hazardous, unsafe conditions. And as uh, Max train goes by, we do want to tell you the steel, steel bridge itself is perfectly fine and all access uh, going. It is open except for here at the Everett Street on ramp eastbound. Guys, back to you. Incredible pictures there, Tim Gordon in Old Town. Thank you, Tim. Speaking of efforts, by the way, to find safe places for homeless people to go today, the mayor officially tapped a property in inner southeast to be the city's first temporary sanctioned campsite. As Mike Benner reports, the property near Southeast Powell and 13th will be a place where more than 100 homeless people can sleep and get access to services. I know that people are tired of hearing us talk about addressing this issue. They expect action. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler on Thursday announced where he intends to open the first of six city-sanctioned homeless camping sites. We have an agreement in principle. We do not have the signed lease as of today, but I am very confident we will do that soon. This property near Southeast Powell and 13th Place is where the mayor anticipates putting 100 tents and approximately 150 houseless individuals. They'll have access to basic services like food, restrooms, showers, laundry and storage, even physical, behavioral and mental health checks. But we're told cooking, fires, alcohol and drugs and weapons will not be allowed. The site will have a perimeter fence and round the clock security managed by the service provider. That service provider will be Urban Alchemy, a nonprofit that runs similar sites in California and Texas. Urban Alchemy leaders say that people typically spend anywhere between three and nine months at their sites. What we found is when we create holistic healing environments, with people who respect them and engage and present them with options that they can choose how to move forward is that folks are willing and, and eager to participate to get their lives back on track. With that, though, comes concerns. When we learned last month the property near Southeast Powell might become a mass camping site, KGW connected with a handful of nearby business owners. They all agreed something needs to be done about the homeless crisis, but none of them went on the record for fear of backlash. Eric Kress of the Central East Side Industrial Council did go on camera Thursday. We look forward to more collaborative, collaborative efforts with the city to ensure our community is safe and everyone receives the care and support they need. Mayor Ted Wheeler promises that much, adding that he hopes the camping site is up and running by summer. Maintaining the status quo is not a compassionate response. Creating temporary alternative shelter sites is compassionate and the need is obvious to everyone.
In the coming weeks, the mayor and his team will be hosting some community conversations with nearby neighbors and business owners. This as city staffers continue to try and acquire additional properties to turn into shelter sites. I'm told there are several contenders. Reporting at City Hall, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. We'll take a look at this. The Washington County Sheriff's Office has released courthouse surveillance video of a murder suspect who escaped from a Hillsborough courtroom last month just as jury selection was about to get underway. Let's give you a look. The suspect, Eddie Villalobos, is in the blue shirt. You see him there with deputies leading him into the courtroom. So deputies remove his handcuffs and then his leg restraints that is required under Oregon law during trial proceedings. So almost immediately after, just watch it, he gets up here, kind of takes a step. Watch this here takes a leap and then makes a run for it down one corridor and then another a staircase and now through what appears to be a staff entrance in progress nearly running over someone along the way that escape which you're watching resulted in a huge law enforcement response February 27th one that involved drones and canines now a couple hours later after all of this there he goes again authorities say they caught the suspect hiding in a bedroom closet in a nearby apartment complex Phil Lobos is accused of stabbing two people in 2021 killing one of them. A former Blazers and Sonics player was arrested in Washington following a drive by shooting. Sean Kemp has now been released and no charges will be filed. But listen to how this all started. Kemp's attorney says someone had broken into the former player's car and stolen his iPhone. He tracked his stolen phone to a Tacoma Mall's parking lot. And when he tried to get it back from people inside a car, one person allegedly pulled out a gun and shot at Kemp. His attorney says Kemp shot back in self-defense. Fortunately, no one was hurt. He was booked into jail on investigation of a drive-by shooting, but was later released and charges dropped. Kemp, a six-time NBA All-Star, played for the Trailblazers for two seasons in the early 2000s. And staying in Washington, in Olympia, the Senate has passed a bill related to police pursuits, one that would essentially lower the threshold when it comes to a chase. Anjali Kakade with her sister station, King 5, explains how that is different from the current law. Well, a few things are different, but the biggest difference is it would allow a police officer to engage in a pursuit if they have reasonable suspicion that a person has committed a crime or is committing a violent crime, such as sexual crime, domestic violence cases, escape and drunk driving. Right now, based on the law passed back in 2021, it only allows for the pursuit of DUI suspects with reasonable suspicion and other violent crimes must need probable cause. Police also need to receive authorization from a supervisor. Instead, Officers would have to notify a supervisor. Now, shortly before yesterday's vote, more than 100 people rallied on the state capitol steps in favor of the vote, including Amber Goldate, who spoke about the death of her daughter in 2022. The 12 year old was hit and killed by a driver of a truck that had been stolen down in Pierce County. Let the police do their jobs. I have suffered horrendously and I will suffer until my dying day because the police were not able to pursue a known criminal. Now, other parts of the bill include police notifying surrounding areas impacted by the pursuit, the pursuing officer's ability to communicate with others, a plan to end it all, and additional training by officers. Now, the bill now moves to the House. In the newsroom, Angela Cockaday, back to you. Thank you, Anjali. Now, speaking of politics, as many of you know, the late Len Bergstein was our political analyst here at KGW for two decades. More than that, he was a great friend. You know what? I could still hear him <laughs> laughing behind us on set here. So as you know, Len passed away last fall. Today, the Oregon legislature held a hearing on a resolution honoring Len. And Laurel, you were there in Salem to testify in support. What was that like? Oh, gosh, David, it was such a real honor to be there to recognize Len and his contributions to the people and the state of Oregon and the city of hmm. Portland that he loves so much. Yeah. Friends, family, and colleagues testified in person and virtually before the House Rules Committee in support of House Resolution 24. It recognizes Len Bergstein, a political strategist for his lifetime of counsel, dedication, and service to Oregon. Former Oregon Governor Ted Kulingoski, a friend of Len's for 50 years, spoke of Len's humor and wisdom. And Attorney General Rosenblum, a longtime friend as well, talked about how Len helped encourage her political career. And I was honored to speak on behalf of all of my colleagues here at KGW about how much we miss Len and how he continues to inspire us today to be our best selves. Len Bergstein truly was a giant among us, and his passing has left a giant hole in our hearts. But Len also inspires and challenges us to continue his legacy of making giants of others 
and in doing so, like Len, we'll make giants of ourselves. Rest in peace, my dear friend. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone, for the resolution passed the Rules Committee forward. unanimously. Well said, making giants of others and giants of ourselves, that is his legacy. Yeah, he, he sure did that. So what's gonna happen next year? Well, now it goes to the House floor, that'll happen next week, then it goes on to the Senate, and if it passes there, the resolution will become official, it will be presented to Len's family and entered into the historic record for this 82nd legislative session. I mean, a fitting honor. I am sure he would be sitting there with a smile on his face. I'm sure he would be proud. I think he would be too. Thank you, Laurel.